And welcome back, Seven Days to Die modding fans. This is Zith, and today's video is going to cover uh, the new A20 tutorial project. And um, this project is an expansion of the previous ones in, in that it covers um, several different templates. And I'm only going to cover one uh, in detail today, which is the um, using the scripts uh, to set up a uh, a character. Uh, but in, as far as a, a quick overview on some of the others here, you'll notice that uh, we have various assets already included in here. Um, we have a template on how to make an animal character. We have a template how to make an animated flag if you want to make your own flags. Um, uh, this directory is where the finished copies are that should work in game. Um, today we're going to talk about the tutorial skeleton here. I'll show you how to do uh, use the scripts that I've included in this project. There's also a template for vehicles and a template for um, making weapons like guns and how to place all the attachments in there. Uh, there's also a template on uh, zombies as well. So today let's go ahead and just pick a, um, we're going to use the tutorial skeleton. And in this folder there are two things basically. This here, this skeleton, is essentially a, um, a raw model. Uh, you can say it basically has all the bits and pieces and it's something you might find on uh, Sketchfab or whatever that's not rigged. This version is what it would look like after it's already passed through Mixamo. Now I'm not going to basically cover that right now. Uh, I can do that, and I've uh, done that in previous videos. But basically, once you run this through Mixamo, you're going to get a um, a character. In his case, this one's uh, called Skeleton T pose. In, in Mixamo, when you finish rigging, you want to save it as a Unity F FBX in the T pose position, and this is what you're going to get. What it actually includes is a T pose animation and an avatar uh, and the rig, in addition to the bones that you had previously. Okay. So basically, um, what I've done is I've made a very simple scripted process here, 15 steps. Um, and uh, after we test this, maybe there'll be a few other minor things to add in. But essentially, step one is you rig and mix ammo. You want to check the fingers to make sure that the fingers are all look good. I've seen many models where the fingers that are, that are all really um, squirrely, we call them guppy fingers. Uh, but basically, there's a setting in there to rig it so it, it uses uh, just a whole hand rather than figures. That will sort that for you. You want to force it in Mixamo in a T pose and then save it out, as I said, as a Unity FBX file in that T pose. Then we're at step three import the FBX into Unity and change the rig to humanoid. So I'm going to go up here. This, is, this one here is the output from Mixamo that you would have saved to your desktop and you would have brought in the Unity. I'm going to go ahead and bring it over into the hierarchy over here. All right, and then uh, we'll go ahead and change. I'm going to slide this over a little bit there and slide this over a little bit. So you get a pretty good view of what we're doing here. And here is the skeleton. It's in a T pose. Um, I have a, a uh, what I call an entity cube here that I've made up for you. That basically shows you it's down a half a block, but this is means your character is exactly positioned perfectly uh, where it will be uh, working in the game. So I'll put that there just temporarily to show you that. Okay, back to the skeleton. So let's go and bring up our steps, and it says rig and mix ammo, blah, 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 blah. Um, change the rig to humanoid. Okay, so the rig is on this thing we dragged over. So you see here under the rig tab, it, when you bring it out of um, mix ammo, it's going to say it's generic like that. Uh, but basically what you would do is then come down and switch it to humanoid and click apply. You really don't need to worry about these other settings here. They're all going to basically should be all green if they're not. Um, you know, you're going to find out about that soon enough. But 99% of the time or better coming out of mix ammo, this is you don't need to go into here. Okay. So basically we've done that. It's now humanoid. Leave all this default and we'll come back over here. So now we have this character here and you'll notice that it's got all this mix ammo stuff um, and all these body parts down here. We need to get rid of the word mix ammo. So how do we do that? Well, what I've done is included a set of scripts that do a lot of this work for you. So we're going to come here to step um, 
four here. Now this is the critical step, it's the one that the testers have made a mistake on. We drag the FBX to the hierarchy, which we just did, and right click on it and unpack completely. So you want to come to the top parent and you want to right click, oops, click on it, right click, and you want to come down to prefab and unpack completely. If you don't do this, everything subsequently is going to be problematic. So you do that and it changes it to black. Now, that means we can now do modifications on this. When it's blue, it's sort of in the finalized lock stage. So we're going to go to the next step now. And what does it say here? We want to select the character, top parent and hierarchy, and then we're going to right click and select rename mix ammo. So when you right click, there's a bunch of new menu options that have been added in here. I put them in order starting here, rename mix ammo. When I click on that, you notice it's changed all of these here. All of the bone names have all changed here. All right, got rid of the word mix ammo. That's one important step that we had to do and it was all done for you automatically. Go back to the script and now we're going to do the same thing but on step seven, right click. We're going to be on the top parent all the time when you're doing this. Right click and select add children. So I'm going to back here, only click once, right click, come down under the rename act, mix ammo to add children. Boom. Okay. It's now gone ahead and added. I'm going to collapse this part here. We don't really need to look at this right now. Under this orange, you have the hips and right up a leg. It's added the gore children that you need. It's added a large entity collider. You notice it's not tagged yet. That's going to happen later. And a new, a new um, child object called icon tag, which is when you display the stuff in game over, over the character head, like their health and their name and stuff like that goes right there. So you see that's already been done for you. All right, let's go back and see what the script tells us to do next. All right, coming down here, um, rename the mesh to LOD0. That's the main mesh, okay? So that is right here. You see in this one, the main mesh is called skeleton. Now, the reason why we have to rename it LOD0 is that's a TFP standard. And if you want to use the, have the fire particle to stick to the mesh, it has to have that name. Otherwise, you've got to rewrite the buffs and stuff. So go ahead and let's take the opportunity to make that change right now. These are child meshes. You don't have to mess with them. This is the main one. All right, it's going back to the script. Um, export as FBX. And then we'll set the FBX to humanoid again, because again, whenever you export it, it changes it to generic. And we're going to set the mesh to read write to enable particles to, to write to the mesh. All right. So how do we do that? Again, we go to the um, top parent, which is where we always go to. We right click and we come down to F export to FBX. Do not use this one. I've had mixed success with it. Export to FBX. When that pops up, you have some options here, but basically it should look pretty much just like that. You don't need to change anything. Just where do you want to put it? I'm just going to drop it in the root asset folder for now. Um, and the exported name, I'm just going to call, uh, call it skeleton tutorial uh, and get rid of the T pose. So that's going to give us a new FBX, not the one that we exported from XAML, but a new version with a brand new avatar because the avatar is metadata for the changes we've made. You've got to have a new, av a new avatar and there'll be a new one in this FBX that we want to use. Okay, so I'm going to click export. It runs through the process quickly. It says down here, success. Now what I'm going to do is just get this out of here, delete this out. There's other ways of doing it, but that's the safest way. And then I'm going to go back to the asset folder, the root asset folder, and see here's skeleton tutorial. All right, I'm, it's generic. I'm going to put it back to humanoid. All right, apply that. And then I'm going to drag this puppy back up here and start with that one. Now, if, if you wanted to keep your original one up here, that's fine, but you've got to come over to the avatar and tell it to get the avatar out of the new FBX instead of the old one. Uh, it won't do that for you. My, this method is pretty foolproof. And I recommend you go ahead and do it that way. Now, you notice they're all blue now. Um, we've made all the changes. So this is now matches. Um, it's all locked in there. So let's go to the next step. Make sure we covered everything. Uh, we export FBX. We set it to humanoid. We didn't set it to read write. All right. Good thing we have a little thing to cheat there. We go to this thing. Um, go to the FBX that we before we dragged it up. It's fine that we did that out of order. And go to the model tab. 
and you'll notice read write enable you got to check this box and then apply it all right and now that is will enable that so you've done the LOD 0 and the rewrite mesh this character should use TFP fire particles no problem in the game back to the script um, we dragged it up there okay so we want to right click and select 3d object ragdoll and fill in the fields again go back to the parent all right and uh, go up to the uh, let's make sure I have this set properly 3d object ragdoll and we come up here uh, game I should say game object 3d object ragdoll so I'll edit that documentation here we have the ragdoll wizard and we want to go and fill in these fields well to do that we need to um, click on origin if you hold the alternate key down and then left click on origin it expands all the child out for you in one nice easy shot so it's easy to see what you're doing pelvis pelvis is always the hips under the origin so we drag that in there and then left upper leg is the left hips and left leg is the left knee and the foot is the foot and then we do the same thing on the right side right upper leg right leg right foot now we go for the arm left arm is left arm and left forearm is the elbow and do the same thing on the right right arm right forearm middle spine that's kind of on a mixamo rig is spine one is spine spine one spine two this one's in the middle so we're going to pick that one head is head oops now that's a drag error here let's do it spine one and then head is head the weight, um, some people use 80, some people use 120. Um, the, the zombies, the little zombies in the games are one uh, are 80. I use 120 because, well, they're not dead, and so they're probably not as dehydrated and stretched, you know, and, and uh, uh, well, you know, it's compressed, bony, as the Z, 80 said. So I make it 120. It's not that critical, as long as it's not an obscene number. When you've done that, hit Create and that step's done you'll notice all the ragdoll components here if i go ahead and i look at the middle spine you see it's added these ragdoll components that are all pre-configured for you all right let's go ahead and see what the tutorial says next here um we've added the ragdoll right and we filled in the fields now adjust the ragdoll colliders and the and the collider collider to fit the character all right um it did not put the collider collider on. Interesting. The script did not do that. Um, that's probably because I have not updated this tutorial with the final script. Okay. Um, but basically, that would there'd already be something there for you. I'm just going to go ahead and for now put that in there. And basically a capsule collider. And the radius uh, should be 0.17. And the height should be... Um, one point rounds 1.7 and the center should be about 0.9 and you see there's the capsule pretty much where it needs to be you can also click here and you know adjust it a little bit if you want like that but that piece is on there now okay um, the next thing we're going to do is go back to the script here and where are we at adjust ragdoll colliders and collider to fit the character okay so we go back to this one here you notice that these colliders don't fit really really well so that's really a pretty pretty quick exercise um, starting with the uh, in any order you want but starting with the leg if you click on right there it allow you to kind of drag them in it's a skeleton so this is going to be really really quick and then go down to the left leg and bring that in just so they're pretty close do the same thing on the right leg and bring that in. I'm just going to do these roughly because it's not a final product. And the reason why you do this, you don't want the colitis to overlap too much. It really can mess with the ragdoll. Spine one, um, let's see. That usually you have to bring that up to the bottom part of the neck like that. And then hips, I skipped that one. That hips is usually pretty good. Um, you know, you can tighten these up for a skeleton but usually on a, hu a human character or Zed it's not too bad 
Um, let's go back on that and click on that. Now, it doesn't matter whether you use a box collider or uh, Ragdoll does box colliders. TFP is starting to use cylinder colliders in there, but they have a different Ragdoll wizard than we do, so no big deal. And then um, we got to do the head and arms, do the head real quick. And you want to make sure if you have gaps between the colliders, arrows and stuff, bullets will pass right through. So, so you want to make sure that they overlap just a little bit like that. And then we just have to do the arms and we'll do that real quick. And uh, you get the idea here. And then I usually keep the collider pretty close to the wrist. Um, it's not a big deal on zombies. You can bring them a little bit more where the where the wrist would bend, like it to the palm. On humanoids that are going to use guns, you want to make sure that the collider doesn't interfere with the ray cast coming out of the gun. So I usually pull it back to the top of the wrist. And then here, let's just do this real quick. And then one more. And you could skip this part if you've done this before. Okay, and coming back, you see it looks pretty good all in all everything's overlapping no gaps and so that's that so let's look at the steps here we went ahead and we fit the character now we're going to go back to the parent and right click and select tag bones so if we right click here come back and we come down to tag bones and what it has done now it has put these tags in on all of these like the gore children and everything and everything's all tagged rather than you have to visit each one to do that so that's all been tagged up now all right and now basically you can add the controller of your choice um, if this is going to be a zombie again come back to the top parent click here and pick a controller this is my uh, a20 universal controller for the zombies and you click on that one there and then at this point, you come up to overrides and click. And I'm, I can't really show you. It says revert all. Let me see if uh, there's a button to the to the right of it. Um, you can't really see it. Another, the, the, actually, the best way to do it here is have a finished folder. Uh, so I have this one called finished tutorial prefabs. You know, it's already got a skelly. I call this one in there. Um, but I'm just going to drag this down into this folder and click original prefab. You see it's it's thinking about it, it's packing it and making that copy. And then there is your final product ready to be imported in the game. And if you click here, um, when you go to overrides, it'll say no overrides. So it's the act of saving it as original prefab goes ahead and locks all that um, changes down in for you and commits the changes. So you're done. You just right click on this and right click and build multiplot platform and then you know save it wherever you want to go as uh, name it and then you do the XML in game and you're good to go. All right. Thanks for watching. I'll fix that one script and uh, probably redo this with that in there and uh, hope you uh, start making characters for the game. Thanks.